Morning and welcome to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the game as Dungeon Master, and I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the Half Elf Shadow Sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the Tabaxi Gloomstalker Ranger Rogue, and Joe O'Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the Human Battle Master. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, wow, you got a lot of catching up to do. But Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. Check that all out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episode of the show on YouTube. Of course, don't forget to take a look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can take a look at your favorites like Troll Killer, Yes, 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 and of course the Dungeon Dudes logo, or you can take a look at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Also, just as a note, uh, all of us on the cast are going to be heading to PAX Unplugged uh, in December. So everyone on the on the team, all four of us are all trucking down uh, with a few of our friends. Uh, I believe Kyle is going to be there yeah. as well. <laughs> as well. So if you are making the trek to uh, Philly for uh, PAX Unplugged, uh, please follow us because we'll be figuring out if there's going to be a time when we're going to do any sort of fun, uh, kind of fun get together. But otherwise, we're going to be playing some games. I think we're going to play some D&D Adventures League. We're yes. going to sign up for the Epic, meet some new friends, some cool people, watch some sh shows, and just generally have a good time. So if you are going to PAX Unplugged, uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter as well at Dungeon underscore Dudes because we will be posting posting at any of our PAX related activities there on the Twitter. And if there is that's any awesome. sort of kind of find us in the main hall sort of thing, that's where you'll find it. So with that, let's return to the ruins. Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalk the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Welcome back to the ruins of Drakenheim. We begin once more where our story began, at the old Eckerman Mill. The creaking windmill broken down to time, roiling in the wind around the makeshift campsite of the Hooded Lanterns, the Caspians, and a few representatives of the Amethyst Academy. What was once a lonely and abandoned hill, like a grave marker in the midst of the Karen Hills, has become the last camp of our heroes and their allies, having fled the city in the wake of the Rattling Revolution, <laughs> <laughs> which has seized and caused untold chaos through the outer reaches of the city and resulted in the Hooded Lanterns fleeing their barracks, which they have held for some time. On the flip side, our heroes have now assembled from the clutches of the Queen of Thieves the badges of the small council of Drakenheim. With all seven in hand, their path to the throne of Drakenheim is clear, for they have not only the sigils of the small council, but a potential heir in hand as well, as the young Prince George... <laughs> has traveled with his grandfather, Saul, Jack Saul Jackson, to the ruins where the Caspians have formed a small campground. There's only a few dozen Caspians that are here but now, but they have built for themselves a fortified camp uh, with wooden barricades and palisades all around and large tents to protect the perimeter of their own camp. 
they haven't shared this area with the Hooded Lanterns, who have made their own sort of makeshift camp of their own that is quite less defended than the Caspian's own accommodations. But the Hooded Lanterns have been working to dig a ditch and build up their own fortifications around this sort of makeshift fort now that is being built around Eckerman Mill uh, a few miles outside the city. The long day is over and you have recuperated from the events of the past few hours, rested over the nights, and as breakfast begins in the camp, a meager meal with the few bits of uh, local wildlife, a few rabbits that the Hooded Lanterns were able to hunt down in the fields, um, and most people are avoiding eating any rats or other rodents, though, um, and what few provisions they've been able to find from the city itself. I just want to point out that the rangers don't need no glamping. We rough it in the wild just fun. All right, okay. But when you're uh don't be c- complaining about like back problems and like oh I don't I don't want to go on my watch cuz I'm so sleepy. Um when war comes, uh the Caspians are in their luxurious campsites. Mm. I imagine that uh Sebastian Crow is just standing in the mill looking down at the um, carvings of yes. the uh, the Jackson 3, which is cross- crossed out with the three <laughs> crows, which is crossed out with the veil and the pussycats, which is crossed out. And it has the list of our former team with rat food, gimbals, and chubs uh, <laughs> crossed out. And then cat, which is crossed out, and then veil written next to it. Yeah. And Sebastian and Pluto. It really come full circle, eh? You know, we meet here first, and your last people got eaten by rats, rat food. It's all connected. And now we're back, <laughs> being chased out of the city by, by rats. rats. <laughs> Truly, time is a flat circle. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have Dragon Force written? Can we do a cool Dragon Force now? I take my claw and I start to like etch it into the. Yeah, because uh, because this is like. This is it, guys. It's been the three of us for for a while now. We've survived. We did that so was like far. My one goal, and I was kind of worried about it the last time we kind of set off from the Ackerman Mill. Literally the first adventure, I was <laughs> concerned. I mean, you did. I mean, you almost got eaten by rats, literally in our in our first mission together, and our second mission. Like you would think that I'd have, uh, like, kind of like a. A fear of rats, but if anything, I've grown accustomed to <laughs> Empowers being you. eaten by rats. Like I'm actually pretty comfortable with it. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna die, I guess. Uh, I mean, it still, it still sounds like a horrible way to go. I'm not gonna let you get eaten by rats. I really appreciate that. Kill me, please, instead of letting me die from rats. I don't know if I could do that. Well, do I don't, one of them. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just blow up all the rats and you. That's better. Okay. Okay. All right. For me and the rats, it'll just be as I eat them, they'll eat me. And it's just a circle. Round, round. Circle of a life. horn sounds in the morning, signaling the start of a meeting between all the leaders that have assembled here. The, in the midst of the Caspian camp, they've made a large bonfire outside where they've arranged several uh, places for everyone to sit and discuss so that the plans can be made for what to do next. Uh, do we need to worry about anybody scrying on us during this? At this point, I don't. I don't know. I think the queen. I think we're already enacting the queen's plan. And that's a paladin. I'm worried about. Hmm. Well, we could. Uh, what about uh, your little tiny hut? It doesn't know. block. I guess scrying. I have to say little tiny, but yeah, it doesn't. Really I mean, block. it's it's a pretty decent size, man. No, I'm, I didn't mean to shame your size. It's just a tiny hut, not a little tiny hut. Okay. <laughs> your teeny tiny itsy bitsy hut. It doesn't do anything, right? From, uh, from it does scrying. it does nothing, Pluto. It does nothing, okay? I go, I go you know sit what? around scared, the campfire. You scared my nephew and uh you did you remember he, the rant you went on? He asked a question and I gave him an answer. I I'm I'm sorry. You're not good with kids, I'm, is what I'm trying to say. I say, guys, sit down. Sorry. Sorry. sorry sit down. Right where I am. I st- yeah, I sit. I squat. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to look all like intimidating. As I'm like the Lord Commander. 
Well, let's go to the meeting. I, I guess we're needed at that meeting. Yeah. Uh, horns. Okay. As you file into the meeting, each of you is brought separately to sit with those who you are considered a representative of. Veo is led in with the hooded lanterns to sit with the lieutenant commander Petra and Ansem. Sebastian, you with Eldrick and River, who are both here, and Joe as Pluto, you are brought <laughs> with Jupiter and greeted by your father, Saul Jackson. And we do a, a Caspian handshake, which is way more flair than you would expect. Y- your father comes up, and as you would expect, Saul Jackson is a barrel chested man. He is perhaps pushing 90 years old himself. But you would not know that, for he has the bearing of a man of 50. Um, He has this full head of hair, which has been very clearly dyed. (laughs) Um, And is every much as large a man as Pluto and Jupiter. Um, He wears a large... um, carved breastplate that has pecs and abs and has this huge cloak with a stripe around it and wears the diadem of a grand duke of Caspia and then across his breast and all uh, padded on it are all these medals from all the campaigns that he has been on and all the all the various a litany of all the military victories that he has won over his over the years most of them against other Caspians (laughs) um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I turn to Petra and I'm just like how many calories do you think that guy has to eat a day to stay that size yeah he's got that like he's got that like Schwarzenegger kind of mm-hmm. look yeah and he, he has this big protruding uh, jaw but unlike uh, the, the more clean shaven Jupiter Jones and Pluto who's got the stubble Saul has this big flowing almost Grecian beard that just curls right out and he has like this kind of curled lock and in, uh, in in his dyed black hair and he's dyed the beard as well and it just it just is all these curls that come down uh, around um and as as you come come forward um the only thing that you you notice is that uh he pockets his glasses <laughs> <laughs> Aww. And puts on, and for for a moment he has to squint to make sure that he can tell the difference between Pluto and Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> Father, ah, my son, and we do like a big hug where we're also kind of like sizing each other up at the same time. Like it's like you're you're kind of squeezing really tight. Yeah, to be like he grabs the back. He says, "You might want to work on your triceps, boy. <laughs> Have you been doing your dips and curls?" No, father. <laughs> a good exercise regime. Healthy body, healthy mind. Yes, father. <laughs> it is good to see you too. Just like he's always like this. He's always just checking out my traps. <laughs> <laughs> a Caspian man's body is like his temple. It is where he worships. Although I see that you've been dragging it through the mud of this city. But <laughs> all for a good cause. Yes, yes, Father. Um, uh, I always appreciate your lessons, and uh, it's it's just good to see you. It's good to see you too. Now remember to shave. <laughs> it's not right for a young Caspian man to have such stubble. You either grow a full beard or clean shaven. And mother as well. I try to change the subject. <laughs> your mother as well. She sends her love. Thank you. And cookies. Um, You ate them? Of course not. I'm on keto. (laughs) (laughs) You look great. Uh, Every time I see you, I'm just always amazed. I'm scanning now. (laughs) Doing the caveman diet. Yeah, it's it's more like a carnivore diet. You just eat, like, just meat. Just a a meat diet. Um, Am I always on that diet? Yeah, you, yeah. I think I sent him. I was like, this works really well. <laughs> ten, ten Drakenheim tips to save you. Uh, to lose weight fast. Uh, to keep toned. In your- I heard Sebastian's got some great weight loss tips. 
Uh, it really just involves sitting. <laughs> <laughs> um, it. I'm just. I'm. I'm. Thank you for making the journey. Uh, I know that this is. Uh, it was kind of last minute, and you kind of sent me here to figure out what was going on, and I'm glad that George is here with us because I feel like we're we're in our final moments. This is everything that we've kind of worked towards over the past 15 years. It's true. The As we work together here, the having the 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 Jackson name behind the throne of Westamar will ensure that we our family claims the throne of Caspia as well in the next election and with both the thrones of Westamar and Caspia our house will be the beginnings of a great empire like one that hasn't seen been seen since the old days. What you have done has been father to a glorious new nation. Thank you. I am honored to serve my country, my house, and my family. I hope I have done you proud. Well done, my boy. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not crying. (laughs) But the work's not done yet. Oh. Gotta kill things. Indeed. And I've gotten really good at it since you last saw me. I've killed at least a bridge of minotaurs. I've killed at least two trolls. I've killed... What else have I killed? Um, Harpies. Harpies. A tower of harpies. A tower of harpies. There was also a courtyard of paladins. (laughs) (laughs) One courtyard of paladins. Wait, wait, wait. Tell all the men of your great deeds. Boys, this is my son. Pluto Jackson, and he is a hero and slayer of monsters. Pluto. And I have uh, Pluto. these are my Pluto. these are my great companions Hi. who have aided me on my journey. Um, my court wizard, Archmage of Drakenheim. My name's Sebastian Crow. <laughs> Eldrick is about to, and then he just <laughs> stops, <laughs> just river shaking her head, and and my. Uh, um, Oh, what was it? What were I? My messenger, muscle, and muscle. The bodyguard. You were the. What was the 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 Lord Commander? The Lord Commander. But what was the other name I gave you? That you were the the my my speaker. That one time, Harold. Harold. No, I was the Harold. Were you the Harold? You're getting confused with the the Harold and the muscle. Mm. The uh, uh, Veo Senya. I heard you have Lord Commander of the Hooded Lanterns. There are cookies in your bag that you brought. (laughs) She zoned out after cookies. (laughs) I can smell them. Have you ever had Caspian pastries? <laughs> no. Caspian baking is known across the globe. I mean, I, I love any baking, but I'm sure it's the best baking, so I should definitely try some. And the secret is sugar. <laughs> what is that? That seems obvious. Men, I have killed monsters, big and small, uh, friend and foe. <laughs> I have slain them um, easily and with great difficulty. And now I stand before you ready to slay the next thing in front of me. Hooray! <laughs> Pluto, 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 Pluto. Pluto. The Lord, uh, the, the former Lord Commander Elias Drexel speaks up and says, if you'll forgive me, well, your deeds are grand. We've got much to discuss. The situation has become very dire. Let's go sit down. Yeah. <clears throat> Seated about the campfire now are the um, the Caspians, the Amethyst Academy, and the Hooded Lanterns. Off to the side, in a carriage that has been drawn up for her, looking out from behind the curtains of the window of the of this carriage, is the Queen Mother Lenore, watching out. She has, as Vale, you were brought up to speed, that she's taken quite ill since coming out of the city Mm -hmm. and is not well. Um, So she is withdrawn from this meeting. Um, 
And now you meet to discuss the next steps. As we begin this meeting, I'd like to take the opportunity to just take a moment to see how thankful we are for all of you as allies to come together and help us with this. I think Drakenheim will be a great city again, but only because of your help. There's a general nod and agreement and say, here, here. Elias Drexel continues. The situation has become very dire, Lord Commander. Lord Jackson's, Lord Jones, mages, honored mages. But we can still, but we have the keys to the city in our possession. No one has mounted an expedition to Castle Draken in years. Years ago, I attempted to explore the castle with some of my men, and we were driven out by the monsters and the defenses of Castle Draken. For while the creatures that guard the castle walls, the ancient gargoyles and dragons, they would not attack me, for I bore at the time the seal of the Lord Commander, but they would not obey my commands. I can only assume that this is because whatever has happened in the intervening years has meant that the entirety of the council is needed to call forth an heir to fully recognize the power of the city. That's my best guess. That's what, what, what we've been hunting for for years. Now we have a good hand of cards to play in order to get past that point. We not only have the seals of the council, but a potential heir. We also have that letter saying who the next heir should be. Mm-hmm. When's the when, when's the right time to open that? <laughs> I think uh no time like the present. I mean, I'm I'm asking the council. Everybody in this room knows that we have that. I carry with me the will, the last will of the king of Drakenheim. And I present it, and I wah, 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 telekinesis it into the middle of the table. Hopefully not into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, um, I don't control. The wind takes it. <laughs> Show who should... The, this letter is to be opened in the presence of the council in its entirety. So we still need a flame keeper. And a steward. Has Eric arrived yet? We have word that he's only a few days away. Because it was Eric our steward? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and I we think. still yes. look to seek the help of um, Lucretia? Lucretia Matthias. Ugh, that's going to go over well. Unfortunately, um, flame keepers are few and far between at the moment. This is true. Saul uh, Saul says, never had a good religious folk. Ugh. Never brought them on any of my campaigns. Lesser commanders would think they need counsel. <laughs> Father, you, uh, you are right. Um, however, in the wake of the new Drakenheim, we must do our best to repair the old ways. Uh, for if we forge this new great land without everyone's approval, the council, we may seek backlash from the other nobles. Right? I look at you. Huh? Yeah? Yeah? Yes. You're, you're doing great. Oh, thanks. Keep going. I've never said this far before. Jupiter Jones speaks up. You speak truly. If we don't... If we don't make sure that we're completely in control, we have to get the backing of all those other lesser dukes and nobles through all throughout Westamar. Let them know who's boss. Aye. It's about balance. Balance of the city. Balance of thought and diversity of thought. I think... This is why the badges were made this way, and it's why 
we need to have who we have on the council. It's good to start New Drakenheim off on a good foot and be proper and right about this. Uh, we don't want to cause more division than we already have. So if I am to be correct, our proposals are as such. Pluto, you will take the role of the Castellan. Aye. The office of the Lord Mayor will be filled by Saul. Yes. The office of the Guildmaster by Jupiter. And the Steward by Eric. Yes. And the office of the High Flamekeeper to Lucretia. Matthias. Yes. As long as we can make a... An arrangement. An arrangement. She will be asking, says Elias Drexel, it's clear, she has been excommunicated by the Hierarch. At the very least, she will be asking for protection. But she could ask for more. I mean, at this stage, we got to protect ourselves from the uh, paladins as it is. The Silver Order is going to be marching on us. So offering her protection just makes sense. She stays in this city and represents this city, then we're protecting everybody that represents Drakenheim. Eldrick interjects. You do know that by inviting Lucretia Matthias to serve as High Flamekeeper in a new royal council, that constitutes a recognition by Westmar as of the falling fire as a legitimate religion and splinter sect of the sacred fire there's been splinter sects before of the falling or of the uh, the sacred flame there's many religions that have stemmed out from it i don't like the way this one operates but perhaps in our agreement with her i think we're all hoping that we can uh lay down some ground rules or something we don't have many options if you if you have something better to bring to the table than lucretia matthias i'd love to hear it but you are yeah we are open i it's the enemy of our enemy at this stage lucretia matthias is maybe mad but she's wise and powerful she could be a potent ally and her words hold great sway with the common folk might help to have the common folk on our side with the spread of delirium in the city she might also be a way to help make it part of the city Whereas the paladins have made it very clear that they only intend to destroy it. As long as if Lucretia Matthias and her followers are willing to work with us, they show no interest in destroying the delirium. They wish to harvest it and use it in whatever their practices are. That's fine. The Academy has no objection to that as long as our allotment is secured. And that will be part of the deal we make. Hopefully. I can't speak to how lenient Lucretia will be. In the past, she's um, she's kind of seemed like it's her way or the highway. Which seems to be very uh, reminiscent of the Paladins as well. Mm. So I think with any of these religious sects, uh, there are going to be um, compromises made to achieve our goals. Is it possible that there's an upstart in her ranks? Could we stage a coup within her own forces, see her death, and then put someone more controllable in her stead? It's not the way I want to go in with it, in mind, but... I'll keep my eyes out for, uh... I mean, we're going in there to talk to her, and we're gonna go meet her at 
her dwelling. We might be able to get a lay of the land. I won't say that we're going to look to execute that option, but if there is disturbance within their ranks and there is a majority of people who don't agree with Lucretia Matthias and there's an opening to have that be a potential, I will weigh those options. It might be something we need to explore after. Yeah, Saul speaks up and says, oh, sorry, go ahead. I think the best thing we can do is go in informed about her and what her goings on are in her group. And I pull out um, the file that I got from the Queen of Thieves. And I say, I'm going to do some reading mm. before we go in just to make sure we have all the facts and know what our options are with her. And I put it back. Excellent. There's general agreement amongst the Caspians and the others, and Saul, who has been overseeing this meeting, says, In my estimation, then, you three shall go meet with this woman, negotiate with her, secure that. Once you've secured her position, I propose a scouting mission, an expedition to the castle. I've discussed extensively with the, your lieutenant, Lord Commander, and he believes that the grounds of the castle are too dangerous for us to bring young George until we are certain of the threats. That makes sense. I think scouting out a, a viable way in to make sure before we bring him, but the way we've seen it, he has to come if we're going to succeed. So I agree with the scouting mission beforehand, but there will be a time where he is going to go. Eldrick replies, Indeed, there will be. But we might be playing into the Queen of Thieves' hands by bringing him immediately and directly into the castle. I have a plan. How tall is George? Uh, he is a boy of 14, so, uh, but he is a, ca he is part Caspian, <laughs> so he, he's about 5'10". I am going to seeming so that everybody that goes into that castle is George. Don't, I oh, mean, I love it, but. Don't worry, there's a protective, uh, uh, barrier. <laughs> We're thinking this. Uh, We're all Eldrick, thinking you've protected us from scrying, right? I mean, like, y yes, I have it put put <laughs> forth protections in the area. I mean, if you didn't, then what kind of a yeah, powerful no, wizard are you? Yeah. <laughs> Eldrick does know He's private sanctum, um, and so he has <laughs> warded the, the area as as b befits it uh, against intrusion. See, guys, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, no, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Sorry, um, it's a temporary <laughs> ward. Like he has to do do this each day, but at this stage, he will be doing these protections. And he, he conti and Eldrick continues, I believe, and I agree, that that is a good plan for when the moment is right. But I concur with Saul and the lieutenant commander that bringing him directly to Castle Draken, sight unseen, is a foolish and reckless course of action. Oh, we'll do the scouting mission. I, I agreed. I think even maybe for the scouting mission, could we make someone look like George to make sure? Just in case we have... However you want to ensure your stealth as you go in. I'm sorry. I believe we, at, this, at this stage, the other problem is making sure that George is protected here in the meantime. And we have very limited resources from which to do that. You have some of the best fighters and spellcasters that I've ever met. That's got to count for something. Indeed, we do, says El Eldrick. I agree, and River and I can. R River and I have negotiated with Saul, who has commissioned our services from the academy directly. The other My dad's got deep pockets, is what he's saying. <laughs> The other thing I'm thinking is, uh, and I turn to Elias Drexel, I say, you said we could buy some men? We can. I could go into go with the contacts and spend some money, and we could hire some more mercenaries if we need more support at this stage. 
Was that for the castle or the war? For the war, but I'm thinking, can we get them staked out on the outskirts of the mill to protect? Oh, to protect the, the mill security. Yeah, could be valuable. Might be the way that we have to spend our tuna. I mean, uh, Lord it, Jackson. At this point, if we are all in on Drakenheim, I would be unopposed to using our resources towards defending this city. And that's only my, like you guys are just as part of that. So that's my, I, I'm more than happy to put any resources that we've acquired towards the, the city. Give us a night to think. We'll talk tonight about what we have. Sleepover. <laughs> <laughs> I also Sweet. I haven't seen my family since I arrived. Yeah, here. yeah, stop. We're Probably you're interrupting. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lieutenant, Commander, you said that you you took an expedition into the castle once and didn't make it very far because the monsters drove you out. Indeed. Can you elaborate on what sort of monstrosities you faced, mm-hmm. just so that we can prepare a at little the, bit at the time? There were minotaurs, massive beasts oh, you've that defended the castle walls and seemed to be wearing the wearing and wielding the arms and armor of the old knights of Castle Draken. Oh, that's upsetting. Okay, that's creepy. There were quite a lot of them, and we were driven off. They were using even the, cr- the old bastolas from the armory as handheld weapons. We faced a few of them back on the bridge a little while ago. Didn't go very well. But It'll that go was before we time. had the badges. And that was before we had uh, this staff. Or anything, really. In the time since we have sent a few, and myself, I've tried to scale the walls. The issue, of course, is that, like the rest of the city... The gargoyles that are part of the walls of the uh, the outer walls are also a part of Castle Draken itself. And so those who attempt to scale the walls or go over them draw the ire of these old protectors. Including I've never seen it, but you know, the dragons on the top parapets. Yeah, I've seen them. You've never seen them in the same place twice, have you? Not since I've been living here. Yeah. Okay. But we have badges, so we should be okay. (laughs) More of a question than a statement. (laughs) (laughs) That was a question, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right? 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 Eldrick (laughs) interjects to say... That should have been true for the executioner of Slaughterstone Square, too. Shouldn't it have not? <clears throat> the influence of delirium, the erratic magics, <coughs> have scrambled the old spells that were put in place. We, in many cases, the old spells that protected the city are still active. And those spells, much like even our own tower, They need to be undone and redone. We have to turn it off and back on again. Classic. That's how you deal to fix it. That's how you deal with all magical problems. It's possible. Turn it off and on again. That the badges will permit you to access and open doors that would not open otherwise. But the defenders and the magics and other things in place they may or may not heal to you. By presenting the badges and speaking your rank, you may be able to control them. (coughs) You can try to seize control over them, but whether or not you will be able to maintain that control is only going to depend on your will. (coughs) Our will is strong. Depends on what my will is pointed towards, but 
in this case, <coughs> strong. We are powerful. <coughs> it used to be that in the old days, if you encountered one of the creatures of the walls, <coughs> you could hold your badge and say in the name of the king, I, your name, and then your rank, command you, command you. It was a strange feeling when you tried to do it using the badges. It was almost like a par- portion of your focus was taken from you. And I remember the Archmage, Modera, once explaining to me that the effect is not on like concentrating on a spell. And so mechanically speaking, you can use the, the creatures that are native to, that are native to Castle Draken, the defenders. A power of all the badges is that you can cast Dominate Monster at will on one, on the creatures of Castle Draken. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. You have to concentrate on it as a spell, but all the badges, including the Staff of Power, have this ability that you can target one of them and attempt to do it. And if you work, if all of you work together to do it. Normally, if one of you tries it, the creature gets advantage on the saving throw. Mm. If two of you try it together, they don't get advantage. <laughs> and if all three of you target a creature together, they get disadvantage on their saving throw. Okay. And we have to speak. Um, what's what's the title that you I... You are the Castellan. You are the High Mage. And the Lord Commander. Yeah. All right. And you have to bear your your badge in your hand. Okay. Shouldn't be a problem. And we're still attuned to it, correct? Yes. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. I would assume you have to be attuned to it for mm-hmm. this to happen. So yeah, in, in, basically any of the constructs of the castle you can control in this way. Um. And if you encounter a creature that would otherwise have some sort of immunity to this effect by by virtue of its creature type, and that that's that's all ignored. It, just some creatures, maybe some of the defenders, may be more resistant to this control. If we all three of us do it, whose DC does it go under? Uh, the <coughs> the DC um, is determined uh, is 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 a fixed okay. DC seventeen. Okay, cool. Yeah. I have a ring, so I'm going to be doing like cool ring things. Cool. <laughs> I have a staff, so it's pretty easy for me to hold now. it. You have two rings now. You have two rings. Finally. Oh, Pluto's by the been way, I'm um, for jewelry ring. since he got here. I'm going to learn some new spells. Do I get another ring? Uh, y- um, Eldrick s- says we would need to bring you back to the tower to give you your new ring. Uh, it's like a ceremony, don't you remember? All right. I just pull like a spare ring out and put it on. <laughs> <laughs> now it can feel cool at least. They have with to all make that it settled, fancy. I believe that you three should go meet with Lucretia Matthias. Mm-hmm. Are we coming back here after? Certainly. Okay. Yeah, because we have to meet Eric. So I guess I don't have to say bye to my family yet. I mean, if you want to. But we're not leaving for the scout mission yet, no. Yep. No. Petra and Anthony <laughs> says, we sent a few runners already to give a letter to Lucretia Matthias that you were coming. Perfect. Um, what time of day is it? The morning? It's the morning. Okay. You've had breakfast now and you've met. Yeah. How about we meet for second breakfast? <laughs> and um, We've already had one. I'd like to, before we leave, I'd like to take a look at this file on Lucretia. Yeah. Do my uh, homework, you know? You, what you've gathered there is, I think... Um, entirely valuable to the situation and it'd be important to know some of her wants or desires before mm-hmm. we go into this negotiation. Also, before we go, I could contact my mom and ask her about Lucretia. Oh! Mm. Okay. So I mean, otherworldly help! Did yes. they know each other? Maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe she knew of her. What would you like to know about from the file? Um... Anything about her past? Um, yeah, what kind yeah, of tragedy? Yeah, I want to start with her past and see if there's anything yeah. here. From the early notes left by Kat, 
Lucretia Matthias was born on the uh, uh, along the coast of Westmar, uh, outside a small town called Helig. And she, um, her divine powers were discovered at a very young age, and she was brought to Lumen um, only at the age of seven, where she was cloistered and trained as a priest and flame keeper. Um, she was very studious. She rose through the ranks very, very quickly um, and served as the high flame keeper in several cities throughout Westamar and Illyria. Um, okay. And at the time, um, the Queen of Thieves has some interesting notes uh, that say um, she was very close with Ophelia Reed. And so her notes of that make particular note that the two of them had a very close friendship, but they seem to have had a falling out. Does it say anything about that falling out? That it, that it happened when Lucretia published her book, The Tenants, uh, the, uh, the Testament of Falling Fire. Okay. Um, so she knows about the, the, the goings on of what a flame keeper is meant to do. What yes. is a flame keeper? Like, d- does it say anything about, or do we have anybody I can talk to about what are the duties of a flame keeper? Um, the the flame ke- uh, flame keepers and high flame keepers are the supreme, atho- like the head priest of a church of the sacred fire. So a and a high flame keeper mm-hmm. is usually one of what would be. Con- uh, the leader of a cathedral so they're usually the ones that report directly to the hierarch themselves so lucretia matthias has had correspondence and met the hierarch over over the years and in fact lucretia matthias she there have been several hierarchs throughout lucretia matthias's lifetime Mm -hmm. and she's been one of the the high flame keepers that has had the rank to vote for the hierarch and in fact what you can see from from these notes was that prior to all, pr- prior to all this, that Lucretia Matthias was considered by the diet of the Flame Keepers to have been, before she broke off, to have been a front runner candidate for a future fl- uh, for a future hierarch. Okay. And the, and this is largely in recognition because one of the things the Queen of Thieves has done is collected documentation of all of the mi- the miracles that Lucretia Matthias has performed. Okay. Right? Um, stating that Lucretia Matthias is, is without a doubt, basically in, in Kat's notes, the most powerful flame keeper short of the hierarch to be born in a generation. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, because she, she records that one of the things that Lucretia Matthias has done is she has performed the miracle of true resurrection, which is to call a dead body, uh, to call someone who has died back to life when nothing remains of their body. When nothing remains. Yeah. Um, And that is normally a miracle that only the hierarch has been able to perform. Right? Because one of the things that is known, that's also like noted in, in Kat's notes, is that the high seat of the sacred fire increases the power of the person who is the hierarch. Oh so even so, before she's attained this level. So j- just just to ex- just to explain that basically the in game mechanical terms whoever is the hierarch of the of the sacred fire is equivalent to a 20th level cleric but only while they are in the high temple. If they leave the high temple their powers are reduced to whatever they were before. But Kat's notes basically say that Lucretia Matthias is as powerful as the Hierarch in the temple without actually being there. I see a lot of benefits to getting her on our side. Uh, most of all, if one of us doesn't make it, <laughs> there might be an option if we have yeah. her Veo. working for Drakenheim. I'm also- one, of, one of her other notes says that Lucretia Matthias has also summoned an archangel named Makeda who is her personal bodyguard 
Makaya? Makeda. Well, we could use an art changel. Could we not? <laughs> Can't hurt. So. I mean, they might not get along with me. She's as powerful as the Hierarch would be. Yes. If she was the Hierarch, again, or not again, but thinking about long-term goals, imagine what she could do. Well, she could, number one, make the Falling Fire a legitimate sect of the of the Sacred L- Flame. Not just legitimate, but super powerful. Superior. Yeah. Cat's notes it? also indicate, like, also, um, basically, um, you don't have a copy of it. Be- you evidently, you didn't find it, but apparently, from reading over Cat's notes, it seems that she has completely read Lucretia Matthias's testament, mm-hmm. and she has some notes in the margin saying, like, she's incredibly well, ar- she's incredibly articulate, and people say she's crazy, but there's a good chance that she's not. Yeah, there's a good chance she's not, but... Some people say she's crazy. <clears throat> and, like, the Queen of Thieves' own notes are saying that, like, better that people think that she's crazy, because because if anyone actually... In, in Kat's own words, she says, it's best people think that she's crazy, because if people actually read what they would be saying, they'd be hysterical. The things that she's talking about are, like, she's like, some of the things that she's talking about are end-of-the-world stuff. It... I, I got a copy of her text, didn't I? Yeah. You haven't read it, but... <laughs> are we spending, like, before we set out, are we spending another night here? Mm-hmm. I would. Yeah, let's do some information digging. I'm going to read this entire text. It's probably cool. going to be really boring. Would you mm. like me to read an excerpt? I yes. Wanna, I want to s- sit in on this. But only if we can picture us sitting around a little campfire in a, in okay. a tent and me reading out loud like it's a fun story for you guys. <laughs> And Vera, you can have the dossier. Yeah. And I'm going to have Ignatius because um, I need to repent. <laughs> In her writing, she writes, St. Dregden was a humble smith turned criminal who cavorted and conspired in his very cell until he was called to the light by the Archangel Michael. The first paladin, blessings upon her, was a craven wench a base and lowly harlot and mercenary, until she found her holy calling. She was called liar, thief, murderer, and worse, until the day she followed a falling star to the place where she was called to righteousness by the archangels. That day, it is said, her purple heart turned gold. This falling star has come from a place of utter and complete darkness a world beyond the stars, and one truly without light. Of course it is corrupt. Yet it passed into our world, through the sacred fire which shields us. And we all know the flame consumes unrepentant evil utterly. Anything which can pass through the flame has grace and goodness in it still. Thus, within these stones is the spark of redemption itself. That is the mark of a truly noble soul. The stones teach us that if we are to that we are to love and embrace the fallen, the downtrodden, the craven, for only from such dark souls can the brightest flames blossom. It teaches us that no deeds make for a righteous soul. There is only faith in goodness that does so. Our faith leads us to great deeds because we become a vessel for the sacred fire to do its good works in the world. We do not work the light. The light works through us. Said Sebastian. I am scared at how much I like her now than I did, but only because the Queen of Thieves, the woman who tried to kill me many times, said she was cool. (laughs) And that makes it all okay? And that's what's even weirder for me. Did you... Like, that... That makes so much sense. And we even talked about how magic came into this world, and how, you know, uh, Ulrich... 
Okay, make so- Admitted that they use the magic, even in all of its evil, to- they harnessed it. And she's basically saying, well, if the sacred flame couldn't destroy it because it destroys all evil utterly, then there's gotta be some good in delirium. And the paladins are just scared of it. Yeah, I could say that about anything. No, you can't, because if it's utterly evil, it okay. would be destroyed. Well, th- that depends on your views on the sacred flame, okay? I mean, I mean, you have a flame, and you utterly destroy things. I utterly destroy <laughs> things with flame all the time. Just because you say a magical, mystical, evil rock passed through some flame, and it's inherently good on, on its core, well, what proof do we have? I guess the proof is that people are jamming it in their chest and surviving, but that could be a, a mishap of magic. I am a man of magic, not a man of faith. I believe. <laughs> I Which believe, is the weirdest thing I have ever heard you say. <laughs> I believe in, in magical powers. I and, believe you. And supernatural you pull a entities. Dog from hell. Sometimes. But I don't agree with jamming crystals in your chest and saying that it's for the good of mankind. Look, I'm not saying believe it all, but she's not wrong okay i pull f- i pull forward powers from from the the shadow fell and like we've talked to a demon but you know what where have the gods been this whole time uh manipulating the rats well okay we have <laughs> yeah that they've been there i mean we have no Puppets. <laughs> we have no proof that lucretia matthias speaks for anybody Look, but herself she i'm not i all i'm saying is is that there is there's threads of truth and honesty and i feel like my earlier dismissal may have been in haste i i can understand that do you remember when we stood at the gates and to lucretia matthias's <laughs> like oh my god and she was like what is sebastian she jam a piece of delirium in your chest and i was like oh that could be a good idea because it sounded reasonable she's really really good at sounding reasonable we just need to tread carefully. Yes. I I can't say that I trust her completely. She says faith has to, you know, is more than action, but faith can't inform actions against others for the sake of faith. So I think I understand more based on reading this, but the paladins did actions based on their faith as well, and look at where we ended up with them. And I feel like the paladins are being manipulated by the hierarch Mm -hmm. so they are less about using the light they're they're doing what she said can you quote that last part again uh yes um we do not work the light the light works through us the paladins are using or the hierarch is using the paladins to gain her it's a her right yes the current hierarch yeah. She's u- she's basically playing a political game, whereas I feel like Lucretia, in all of her failings, mm-hmm. is doing what she believes is the actual yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, Lucretia has a lot of other things that she talks about in her testament, about things that basically the rest of the testament, in addition to like a theological conversation, is basically her laying out all the ways in which the organization of the church is wrong. Mm -hmm. Like she says things like, for example, all the flame keepers are women. And she says that we are all, everyone should be able to be a flame keeper. Um, She says things. One of the other things that she prominently objects to is that is this notion of the clerics and flame keepers of the sacred fire have been selling their spell casting services to anyone that can afford it to pay for all of the expenses of Illyria basically and she says no we should not be doing that um that we should be giving out our like this is a gift that we've been given and we should do it use it how it is meant to be used Mm. she also just discusses how quite prominently that the fact that the hierarch has basically seized control of the government of Illyria and is de facto acting as the ruler of that nation um even though those she and she draws the comparison basically says outright like the hierarch and the church have made our our faith no better than the amethyst academy they basically have like a mage king in in essence that's her argument yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. it's just that 
They're they technically not mages because they're using divine power. They have divine kings and queens. I mean, I, a lot of what Pluto's saying is kind of thinking out loud. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's just that this, it's kind of this realization that, um, I mean, as we stand with other heretics, you know, what we're doing with Drakenheim is going against what is currently considered the religion of Westamar. So, you know, she as another heretic against this religion. It's like I'm saying that we need her. She's a rebellion. And she's a rebel, and I I give her props. Just don't go joining the falling fire. Look, I can put whatever I want in my chest. <laughs> can you? Because you were the one that convinced Sebastian not to. Are we gonna have to play some intervention games? Hold me back. Too? Hold me back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for the record, you guys are the oh. first ones to pump delirium infused things into my chest. <laughs> Um, You're not wrong. Mm-hmm, so uh, I do have a question about the, the her works. Does it say anything about humans versus um, Tabaxi's being able to? Because Tabaxi's we don't. Um, take she the delirium is quite. She much. doesn't seem to discriminate at all. But oh. she she is very open to to, to all people, and um, even even notes how. Um, one of the failings of the the Church of the Sacred Fire is that their entire clergy is human women. Interesting. Interesting. Do you guys think we have enough intel? She's expecting us anyway, so I mean, like, there's we're not sneaking in. We're just going to go knock on our front door. Yeah, we uh, we come as our uh, representatives. So everybody, be on your best behavior. Well, but I want to also use this moment to kind of, as I, as Sebastian's reading out loud, I want to be kind of like holding uh, Ignatius, hmm. and and if he really truly does seek the light, and he is the fire starter for the light, my hope is that he can understand that. Repent. Mm. Repent. I, I did not wish to spill the blood of a paladin. And even even great warriors can misstride off our mm. off our the the chosen path. Um Ignatius whispers to you, bring me before her. You will meet her. <laughs> cool. We seek the truth. Um as you go to leave the camp, as you head along the road, um, you are greeted by the the old preacher that you met weeks ago with the group of the Falling Fire, the man named Abraham Schaefer. He and a few others nod and say, We received word that you're coming. We are to lead you to Lucretia. Much appreciated. You have a way to get to her through the rats? No. She is meeting you, us, outside the city. She has found a safe place. Oh, okay. So nice. Okay. So are you having your rat problems as well? We are, but our faith has shielded us. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. good. We still hold St. Selena's for now. Okay. But we are unable to make our way back into the city. But through her grace, Lucretia Matthias can part the way for herself. She is strong in faith and strength. (laughs) Nice to you. Yeah. Guys, I gotta figure out what spells she's casting, because I gotta learn them. Why? If she can just walk through the swarm of rats on her own, I mean, it's not faith, it's gotta be magic. No barriers or something? Yeah, I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna try to learn. I don't understand the difference. (laughs) Everything's crazy to me. My (laughs) sword talks to me. I don't even know what's happening. Oh, Pluto. (laughs) My sword's been whispering to me. That's normal, right? No. Oh, boy. But I I assume it's a magical sword. And I'm listening. That's okay. What's it telling you? Yeah, I know. He's... Are you, you're messing with me. You're messing with <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, now I am. <laughs> a little bit. Mm-hmm. Or am I? Who are you looking at, Pluto? 
Who's out there? <laughs> Um, from the camp the priest and his followers lead you through the Karen Hills um, to an ab- a long abandoned crossroads outside Drakenheim there amongst the timbers of what remains of several buildings is an old chapel to the sacred fire a small one a simple rectangular building with a small altar to the sacred fire maybe only enough for about perhaps a gathering of 50 people it's Mm -hmm. a very humble building that perhaps at this crossroads here where a few people gathered they would worship from local villages when they still survived here and the roof is completely collapsed in. The doors are smashed off. The windows are gone. The building is just a shell, basically. And Abraham Schaefer says, She'll be in there. Let's go. <clears throat> Who wants to take point? I will. One? I'll go forward. Right behind you. And I walk up to the broken doors. Hello? Inside, at the altar, making a small bonfire and about to light the altar, is Lucretia Matthias. Um, there is a silver cord coming out of her back and trailing off behind her into nothingness Um, and she is garbed very simply as you saw her before in white robes with a black habit um, with the own the symbol of the sacred fire and that she of her modified sacred fire which is that of the meteor itself. And she carries the copy of the Testament in her hands. And she speaks and says, Welcome. I will relight the flame here. And she speaks a few words, and the flames of the altar light up, causing the fires to dip around the room. I have waited some time for this day when you would come and we would talk once more well things happen for a reason and there's a reason it wasn't before Mm. now all paths led us here Lucretia thank you for meeting with us there were many paths that could have brought you here and many paths that stir you away from them While the flame reveals the pathways ahead, we can only let the light stretch so far into the unknown. You must take the step into darkness for the edge of the light to continue. And as we wander through darkness, it is only with time that our destination is revealed. Well, we've been... Walking in darkness for some time now. Me, most of my life. Yeah, I tripped you have so loud. I know why you're here. We got a job offer for you. I will accept. Now we need to discuss the ins and outs of accepting this role. Indeed. You will become part of a team, meaning that all the members of that team need fair and equal contribution to what Drakenheim is going to represent. There is no single person on that team who is in full power. 
your religion, which will become a certified religion of Westmar. Th- that's that's going to be helpful for you, but there needs to be some regulations. There have been many in the church and without that have found new life and meaning in our teachings. We will organize as we see fit, but we will render unto the crown what is the crown's, as long as the flame is given its due. I think we were led in the wrong direction when we worked with the paladins. And I think based on what I've learned from your past, you've come head to head with them and gone a different path than than what they taught. And I think we're learning now that they're not all they say they are. The Many of them are noble, but they are taught from a very young age not to question their orders or the order of the world itself. They do not see how a raging flame changes the world. They only see how a contained flame burns brightly. They do not see what happens when it is allowed to be free. Oh! <laughs> silent. It was, it's always on silent mode. <laughs> I turned it off of silent mode to watch a video of Joe. <laughs> now, this done, I have but one request. Your new king must join my flock. George. What does that pertain? He will be given the teachings that we have learned, and when he is ready, he may take our sacrament. I know I went on this big rant about how I'm really liking her. So, if we are to be the religion of this new world... Is it not appropriate that this new king take it up as well? I think that would be a question for the king. He is a he is a man, a young man, but if he intends to hold the ruler the the rulership, the the crown of Drakenheim he must decide for himself. Well, then I hope he makes the right decision. I think it's unfair to force anybody into the religion. I think that that needs to be one of the stipulations that you shouldn't have the option to force people. I am not forcing him. I am saying that I will help a king who follows our religion. I think also intention, not saying that he should be forced into it, but if it is going to be the religion of the city, should not the ruler set the example? Yeah, I I have to agree with Feo. Um, As as much as my earlier concerns, I had fears before, but as I listen more, this is a necessary step for the king of Drakenheim. Hmm. You're gonna let George I jam the name in his chest? No, no. He he is but a boy of fourteen. He cannot take the sacrament until he is of age. That is our tenant. Okay. I just think if he's ready to step into a castle full of dragons and danger, uh, it, this seems like this would be a, a drop in the bucket. Is it not enough that he chooses to acknowledge your relation or your religion as a valid religion in our city? He, being a member of the council means 
that you are being represented by the king. Whether or not all the members of the council follow it, it, it doesn't really matter. You'll, you'll be represented and he will stand for that, but I think him joining your religion, mm. you need to make the decision to join the council before we've put him on the throne. My young man, you should understand that there is a difference between being merely tolerated and being supported. May I ask, Lucretia, what, as you served as a flamekeeper for other cities, what were your experiences with the royalty and their following of the flame? Less than (laughs) pious. And I would hope that with this young George, that given there is time in his education, that he may rise to be a faithful and flame-fearing servant of the sacred fire and of his people. And if his people, you must know, more and more people are hearing our truth. Yes, we have heard. I have one question, and this this can change all decisions going forward. If George decides to follow the faith and take on the sacrament, will he be imbued with magic? He will be imbued with faith. In the These form are of different magic. things. We cannot have a king on the throne that is a mage in any way, shape, or form, regardless of it if it is divine or if, not. If we end up with a divinely powered person on the throne, we have a chance of becoming no different than exactly what you fought against with the hierarch. The sacrament only emboldens the soul. It does not affect the mind in that way. It does not create... It does allow one to access one's soul in a way that you could not before. But is it magic? Certainly many things are magical in this world, but it is more miracle than anything else. The lines of miracle and magic blur quite often. Speak your mind. To me, they are very clear. I mean, you, you know I have issues with this, but I mean... The few months we've been traveling together, all I do is speak about the issues that I have with things and look where that's gotten us. So Pluto Jackson, it's your nephew. We need a flame keeper and I understand that we need a flame keeper. Do you think that this is the right path? I think it's not my decision. It's George's. And if he chooses to follow your teachings, then so be it. But I I can't, I can't say, yes, you can take a throne and no, you can't follow the faith. I feel like he's either, it's all or nothing. I can't have one without the other. So I have to let go of my concerns and my fears and let him decide. Now I am going to speak my mind. Just as a side thought. You say that there's a distinct difference between being tolerated or being supported. Yet, there are laws in place saying that I can't teach George magic. Why should it be different for you? The Amethyst Academy, in most cases, is just tolerated. I'm hoping to change that. 
But why do you why do you get to act differently than me and what I represent? From my perspective, I do not see why you why the academy should be merely tolerated either. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> it's 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 okay. These are good questions. I'm not saying no. I just I just want to make sure for once in my life. Perhaps it might be that the Academy could learn from us, and we could learn from them. You, I think, are both interested in something similar, just from different perspectives. The stones. And I think knowing that the stones are here in Drakenheim, that are a force who says that we can't come together over this mm. this thing I will share with you one thing you may show this to your young prince and if you wish to show this to your mage friends this is the power of faith this is the power of faith and the stones she opens up a satchel at her waist she reaches in and produces a crystal. It's a piece of delirium, but it's golden. And it glows with golden light. And she holds it with her bare hand. What sorcery is this? What is that? <laughs> Can I see it? And I hold my tabaxi hand out. It's warm. She puts it on your hand. If... If I touch it... It is safe. Take it. What did you do to it? Yeah. That is from a dear friend of mine. That was the shard that he held in his heart. And when he passed, that's what happened to it. In your teachings, you talk about this. The... Where is it? Um, purple heart turned gold. Finding righteousness? That is a righteous soul. Huh. Uh, would you agree to allowing me to uh, just examine this a little closer? Certainly. Careful, it's her friend's soul. Yeah, I, I just... That's why I asked. That's why I asked. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, they're going to keep talking. I'm going to... Hmm. Okay. Identify or detect magic? Well, detect magic will just tell you it's magical. Identify will tell me. So... Once one who has learned can right. even speak with them. I mean, you're the sorcerer. Yeah. S speak with it. Hmm. I I like step off to the side and I open up my bag of holding and I start pulling out like equipment and like magnifying glasses <laughs> and like I have lenses for my goggles and I'm like examining it and I'm gonna cast identify hmm. on the crystal yeah um, it has a powerful aura of abjuration and conjuration magic and without a doubt this is a vessel that holds a human soul and I detect like none of the things that I would normally have detected in delirium. Like it's, it, it's definitely delirium. Yeah, but it like doesn't hold but any it, of the poison or toxic. Basically, it's operating on the completely opposite arc, like wavelength, magically speaking, to what delirium does. It's like the best way to describe it would be anti-delirium. I. What happens when you touch it to delirium? You you just hear me in the background, just being like, "Oh my, oh my." <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> oh my. And I come back and I... <clears throat> Intriguing. <laughs> I take it back. Right? I, she says... I think I trust her. <laughs> from the deepest darkness comes the brightest flame. Now you see, when you say things like that, I get, I, I get really I, I hopeful about myself. And, oh, right? It's just like, I want 
maybe hope isn't a bad and thing, I, you know? Maybe. I'm thinking about what. What could be done with this? Could this person be brought back in a new vessel? And I hand her back the. She okay. takes it and she's, she says. One day, when the light must spread throughout the world, we have always said in the sacred fire that those who have fallen will need their bodies. But perhaps we never thought about their souls. Where would they come from? Where would they go? In this form, they are now sacred charcoal by which to light the sacred fire anew. What if this is the sacrament in its purest form? What do you mean? Could this be put in someone's chest? I have not considered to do that yet. Mm -hmm. I'm just I meditate on that question. And what it would mean. Does it mean to join two souls? To take one's faith into one's body? So many questions. Okay. I do want to when if you if it's okay, I want to present someone wanted to meet you. It's very close to me. He's at my side. <laughs> Ignatius. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to remove Ignatius and just kind of spin him around and do the hand it off. She this takes the blade. It's a great sword. And she says, I have spoken with the spirits of Vitruvio and Argana. We have taken their bones to St. Selena's. Maybe we can restart the flame. Maybe we can call them back. What? You think you can do that? I have faith. I have heard of your miracles. And now, and only now, do I have faith. Am I jamming delirium in my chest right now? Am I doing it? Not right Please. now. Guys, are you daring me to do this? <laughs> I, some time. No. Am I being dared to jam <laughs> Nobody to dared you to jam to, Okay, to, I'll do it. To, uh, she don't she speaks it. for a moment. She takes Ignatius and she presses the piece of anti-delirium to the blade. I, st- I take a little and step back. And she speaks some words of light. And you can hear her speaking in the celestial language. I understand it. Um, Do I? (laughs) She's almost speaking in tongues, but she's communing with the spirit of of Ignatius. And as she finishes, the blade ignites with golden flames. Whoa. Whoa. And she hands it back to you. Ask him if he's okay. How you doing, big guy? The blade does not answer. She says, I have calmed his spirit. He will be with the flame. Can we use this to bring back one that I have murdered? You wish to bring back Theodore Marshall. Are you sure? I think he deserves it. Actually, I don't know. I think he, his path was... He walked his path. He was a righteous man, if a misled one. I hope that his spirit rests with the flame. Yeah, if we bring him back, then I have to explain to him about <laughs> what happened afterwards. And yeah. I just, I just. Our I don't, business I don't is nearly it. concluded. 
I have one more question for you. Mm. Okay, go ahead. If George agrees, because it is his choice, he will then be, I think, under scrutiny and potentially danger from the hierarchy. Are you and your followers willing to protect him if he figuratively sticks his neck out for you? If the faithful wish to fight for their holy king, it is not my place to stop them. What about you, though? We, if the faithful and their king have an enemy in the old church, then your king will have a grand army indeed. Before we conclude this meeting, I think it's important that I make sure that we are all in agreement and on the same page. So I've made a note. <coughs> <laughs> Get the parchment. A list. Yeah, I have a list here. Um, <clears throat> we can we can discuss these, but this this is what I've come up with here. You will follow the order of the council and the word of the king. You will share delirium with the academy. The academy has a rightful claim to the delirium as well. People may choose your religion, but can never be forced into it. You may have a place in the city to operate, but you may not propagate outside of that cathedral your religion will be known and those seeking your religion can go there to find you and that will also be a known fact that we can spread does that sound agreeable that is suitable okay well spoken Sebastian yeah thank you I'm trying to be a big boy that was good I'm trying to make some uh is this a good decision, guys? Are we making a good decision? Is this going to work? Are we? Are we? Uh, I think, by I think, in the presence of who could be our new flame keeper, I think we have to take some faith, and we've tried and tried and tried to plan before, and it always just goes so sideways, yeah. and sometimes we just got to trust ourselves, and this seems to be a path that's laid before us. I think we're both. We are both moving towards a common goal and against a common en enemy hmm. of the Hierarch. And I think beyond the borders of Drakenheim, if we can solidify and, and organize and well, connect together through this, then we can move on past our borders to help make this world a better place. Yeah, okay. Lucretia, you and I actually have more in common than I think different paths but you were taken at a young age because you discovered your powers and you've raised in the ranks I stumbled through the ranks but I I know what that's like and I know what it's like to be an outcast and then to find your path so I'm trusting you to let the rest of us do our jobs and we'll let you do your job and we'll do it together certainly walk with the flame walk with the flame walk with the flame I will prepare myself to come to the castle when the time is needed you're, you're gonna know when that is could send her a message too. Yeah. I think she already knows. Yeah. I. She got this. Which is kind of nice. Like we, we don't have to bring this. her in the telepathy bond thing. Am I able to learn some of your spells? <laughs> <laughs> There's these miracles that are given to me are a gift from the flame. If you embrace the flame then the flame might bestow them upon you. I've been, I've, I've been embracing flame my whole life, honey. <laughs> 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 and there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of people who would have been able to vouch for that, but they're mostly dead now. Anyway, yeah. I'll see myself. Is out. that all? I think so. Okay. Well, we shall see you soon.
Um, we'll bring the badge. You bring. Or if you come, if you come to the mill, we will present you with the flame keeper's prayer beads. Very and well. you can talk to George, and she can talk to George. And you can, we'll make sure that George will. Very well. I would like to counsel with him so that he knows the decision he is making. He's an impressionable young man, so don't, like, <laughs> go off on him. Okay, all right, okay, uh-huh. all right. <laughs> all right. With that, you depart, and we will take our break there. Oh. And we are back from our break. Uh, before we get back into it, I want to give a big shout out to Tabletop Audio for always providing our ambient music. Um, we uh, Kyle creates some great playlists. Uh, I really think it elevates your game. Check it out for free at tabletopaudio.com and make your games better. And don't forget to take a look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can take a look at all your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts or you can check out the link bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. And if you're enjoying the stream and you want to support our work, you can find us on Patreon. You can find that by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. <laughs> there we go again. We also have a phenomenal Discord community uh, where you can join us there if you are one of our patrons and you can chat with us about all things relating to Drakenheim or D&D or nerdy things in general. So come hang out on Discord. With that, let's return to the ruins. Your negotiations with Lucretia Matthias complete. You head from the crossroads, the old tumble-down chapel, back to the camp at the Eckerman Mill. Um... What is your next move? Well, you said you wanted us to talk to your mom. I mean, that was going to be about Lucretia Matthias, but I think oh, yeah. we, we handled all of that. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think really just before we set out, this is just the scouting mission, right? We're going we're gonna to come back from this one, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the plan. Totally. Survival is the, the name of the game. How are we even getting to the castle? It's kind of full of rats, the city. Yeah. I can get us there. You can get us there? Um, yeah. If we have badges, flying over the city is less dangerous, is my understanding. So, I mean, we flew here, right? I can carry you guys to the courtyard, at least, or the approach to the castle. How many people are we bringing with us? Is it just us? For the scouting mission, it's yeah. just the three of us. Okay. Dragon Force. I okay. mean, okay. Uh, that's what I was thinking. What, what were you thinking, Bayo? Did yeah. you have another idea? I'm just thinking, yeah, I guess the smaller amount of us, the better. But I was wondering if I, we should take like two or three rangers with us. That's up to you. I was thinking that since we're scouting, we have a better chance with, I mean, we suck at stealth because <laughs> of uh, certain people's inability to be stealthy. But well, we can work on it. Yeah, I know. I mean, Veo, like that—that's something you're working on. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> excuse. Yeah. But I think uh, <laughs> should we get a telepathic bond cast with uh, Eldrick and, and yeah. River? Can we fill Smart. up our rings? I know I used one of the spell slots. Uh, yes, you can, but you're only going to be able to get spells from Eldrick and River because they're the only ones here. Can they give me shield? Uh, yes, they can. Uh, how many do you need? One. One. Okay. Yep. River can give you one. <laughs> May I have um, Misty Step? Yes. River can give you Misty Step. Thank you, River. You're welcome. I'm good. I have one. Eldrick more. and River create a telepathic bond with the three of you. Is there anyone else and themselves? Is there anyone else you would like in on the telepathic bond? Hmm. Should we just be able to relay messages to the, uh, the the council, as it were? Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Yeah, how many people can be in the telepathic bond? Uh, up to eight, I think. So us we three. Could just, we could just do the whole council. We can do the lieutenant, <clears throat> commander, uh, your father. But we can choose who we talk to, right? Yeah. Or is it like full yeah. of walkie-talkie? Yeah, I, I, the way that we've been running telepathic bond is that um, you can communicate telepathically with 
any or all. So oh, okay. that, that basically you can choose when you send messages who receives them and who doesn't. Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah. your dad, my dad, or my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Start sobbing. I'm gonna try. I was going to say um, Eric, but he's not here yet. <laughs> um, who else? Do we want Jupiter on the line? or do, do He's not really that. We important. have him on the line, but we don't have to specifically relay messages unless we need to. River, Eldrick, Jupiter, Saul. Uh, probably Elias Drexel. Elias yes. Drexel. Lieutenant. And then the three us, of us. Yeah. yeah that's so good. River, Eldrick, <clears throat> Jupiter, Saul, and Elias. And then us. And then yes. us. Sounds good. Okay. okay. <clears throat> um, do you guys let them know how the meeting with Lucretia went? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we probably come back. We hold a meeting mm-hmm. and explain uh, the rules that we set and that she agreed. And the stipulation that she said. I'm going to pull George aside and kind of give him a pep talk. You're going to be confronted with a choice choice is yours it is hinging a lot hinges on this choice but i need you to understand that it is still your choice and if you do not feel comfortable following her faith we will need to find a new flame keeper but that's something i will stand by saul guffaws and says if I had a medal for every promise I made to a flame keeper, <laughs> I wouldn't have any room on my chest. And I have a very wide chest. Pluto, where are your medals? Dad, I... Okay, I left them back in Caspia because I didn't want to get them dirty. <laughs> yeah. They would have. Uh, or rats ate them. They're... Look. <laughs> face push. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we could have someone put your medals in an envelope, son, and bring them. There's only two of them. <laughs> Dad, why did you tell him how many medals I have? What medals were they most likely to get eaten by rats and most men lost on a mission? <laughs> it was one for killing my first troll. Is this like a Caspian Boy Scouts or something? <laughs> yeah. Your dad's I, the leader. It was... <laughs> <laughs> I I don't like to talk about my medals. It's pretty metal. I was... I was just messing with you. I, I'm sure they're great medals, and uh, I respect you. Listen, you deserve like <laughs> 20 more for what you've done in Drakenheim, so I will make you some out of random materials that I will choose, and you'll have to wear them. Medals don't make it the man. <laughs> I take like a piece of cloth, and I just like, I write good guy on it, and I put it on your armor. And does it fall? Yes. <laughs> Immediately. All of mine will be edible. <laughs> just slides off. Yeah. Well, that didn't work. I pick it up and I put it in my pocket. Good. I want to keep it. So, how are you going to get to Castle Dragon? We flying on an eagle? We fly like an eagle. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I mean, you fly like an eagle. I ride you with Veo. <laughs> yeah. I have good animal handling. I'm going to cast... Do I have it in my ring? Can I cast it under my ring? Nope. Okay, I cast Polymorph. Okay. And turn into a giant eagle. Okay. Woo. So and we step outside of the uh, tent, obviously. <laughs> and I I do my shadowy thing again where shadow explodes out of me into wings. And then I... As it's happening, I jump on your back. Is like, George Before there? you're fully transformed. And I face plant <laughs> and then immediately like I'm like, Pluto, no, blah, and then I turn into a bird and I'm like, Ka-ka! is George there? Uh, George watches with bated breath at the sight of Sebastian turning into... I turn into- to him and I point my finger, my clawed finger, and I say, no! <laughs> <laughs> and in this no. moment, Sebastian realizes that he never said bye to his family, so he sees his family there, and he turns and he goes, ah! <laughs> That means goodbye. And then he flaps. And, and your father wipes a tear. My, my, my boy's gone bird crazy. <laughs> More from allergies than actual. Yeah, like, he's allergic to giant eagles. <laughs> yeah, he's allergic to birds. Oh, all and right. I take off. And I say, <sighs> Carrot Top family, I hope to see you again. I hope you see Sebastian too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, as a giant eagle, um, with both Paluto and, um, and 
I'll Veo on your backs. It's very heavy, but basically Pluto's extremely heavy, <laughs> but Veo is extremely light. So you're able to fly with both of them on your back. Yeah. Um, you're, you're, um, you take to the skies and soar up over the city of Drakenheim as you fly towards the castle. The As you fly over the cities choked with mist and just under the clouds, the as you fly over the city walls, you can see Veo. You see this first. You see several gargoyles break away from one of the towers. Mm. Three of them. Mm -hmm. And they soar up towards you, screeching in dissonant tones. The ancient masonry that that is their body almost with a flash of lightning animated and they fly up in pursuit of you what do you do i cast minor illusion to make a noise can i can i use my own voice when using minor illusion to it says I can make like a yell or a... Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So, it can be your voice. So, I, with this booming voice in the sky, take off my badge and I say, In the name of the king, I, the Lord Commander Veosenya, command you. And I point it out towards them. Okay. Um, say, so... Guys, get your stuff! <laughs> Help me! <laughs> Kaka! <laughs> um, it gets... It fails its saving throw and you've dominated one of them. I say, Pluto! I point to another and I say, In the name of the king, as Castellan of Drakenheim, I, Pluto Jackson, command you. The two gargoyles are bound to you now um, by, this, by the magic of the, of the seals, but the third is still not controlled. What will you do? I uh, command yeah. the other one to grab them. <laughs> the other one to grab the one that's trying to fight. <laughs> and plummet to the ground. Yes. I take evasive maneuvers. <laughs> okay. I drift lazily to the left. Uh, Sebastian, why don't you roll initiative? Just real quick. And I'm just going to see how the gargoyles do. 21. So... Are you basically commanding the gargoyles to grab it and just drop like rocks? Yep. Okay. I mean, yeah, we, we go. Yeah? Yeah. yeah same page? Yeah, yeah same page? literally. <laughs> We're both like, like okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the gargoyles, um, you, both of you can roll uh, strength checks for your gargoyles, and I'll roll one for mine. You get a plus two. Wow. <laughs> Probably doesn't. Thirteen. I got a one, three. Thirteen. I got a five. So Veo's gargoyle is, grabs the other and just puts all of its weight against it. It tries to wrestle back. Um, roll once more for both of you. 10. 10? Uh, eight. It loses to both of you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it draw the, the two gargoyles dog pilot and they let their wings go and the single gargoyle can't hold the weight of two others and they fall and are destroyed by the fall. All Thank three. you, George. <laughs> <laughs> this ring is so cool. I resume standard flying. <laughs> okay. There's a little bit of turbulence. Uh, yeah. You'll see on your right, uh, giant gargoyles chasing <laughs> uh, To the left, rats are eating everything. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you can see that there are, um, there's a lot of rattlings even from up above um, here, here and there, although it is during the day, so they're probably not out yet. Um, you fly over the city, past the tower of the Amethyst Academy and the clock tower, past the spires and the estates of the nobles district and over the old town, a part of the city that you actually never really visited aside from where, uh, aside from the, uh, the old, um, uh, the old administrative house where you killed, uh, Theodore Marshall. Whoops. Um, and you fly up the rise towards castle dragon as we fly i dip my wing into the mist just wanted to make it look I cool i can show you the world no. no and i do this <laughs> and i and i put my arms out and i go i love you rose 
<laughs> nobody, <laughs> who is nobody, Rose? Who so is no Rose? One, I mean, <laughs> uh, so you you hear <laughs> telepathically. Sebastian's just like, is that your wife's name? Is that your wife? Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's my. That is my wife's name. Her name is Rose. Is it? That's canon. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I love her. A great castle. The great castle dragon <laughs> perches atop a cliff at the heart of the city. The castle has imposing stained black towers that are topped uh, by high steeples that are sharp like spear points. The roofing is all made of copper. So it's kind of this green sheen of uh, on all the rooftops. There's a massive central spire that rises out of the keep, decorated with more intricate stone gargoyles, carved in the shapes of dragons, with their serpentine necks leering down from the battlements. Coming closer to Castle Draken, um, as you come close closer to Castle Draken, the whole building is a palatial and sovereign fortification built in the glory days of the great kingdoms of old upon foundations which are said to have been laid, uh, laid in ancient days by the dwarven earth masters of the old of old times there are great towers and parapets, soaring balconies and overhangs, flying buttresses, high arched windows, immaculate carvings of stone, and copper rooftops turned green with age. And there, and throughout, you can see the great oaken doors bound in iron and filigreed in gold. There are innumerable towers around the castle itself. For Castle Draken, is both a fortress and a palace. It is divided into several sections for in, in, in fact, it has two sets of walls defending it. There is an outer set of bastion style earthen walls that at one point in the history of the castle, the, the old castle was built and then an extra set of walls were built around it by actually carving out the mountainside, the, the cliff that it rises upon. And so it is almost a, um, they call them the diamond walls because they jut out in triangular shapes around the castle, forming firing bastions that were designed to withstand even arcane machinery and magical blasts because the walls themselves are built out of stone and across the foundations atop these are the curtain walls 80 feet high surrounded by towers that range from anywhere from 120 to 160 feet in height all around forming the outer walls of the city uh, of the castle itself which itself is then divided internally into the upper bailey and the lower bailey so the the veil from your memory you remember that there's an internal gate so from the main gatehouse you lead into the lower bailey where most of the armories administrative buildings and the servants buildings are and then you go through another gate another fortified gatehouse where there is the upper buildings of the castle as well as the keep and the castle gardens themselves as as well and then through the keep itself is one building that stretches out in almost this elongated shape that then has the central tower rising out of it. Um, all, all, all told, there are over a dozen towers around Castle Draken um, and several larger buildings abutting the walls and then leaving these large open co courtyards in the centers of the, of the two baileys. Um, from your recollection... Um, there are several important towers in Castle Draken Vale. The Great Tower is often some kind, some sometimes called the Tower, uh, the Tower of Stairs, because the highest tower of Castle Draken is literally just that. It is a massive spiral staircase that stretches all the way up the the keep itself, and then continues up and into a high lookout point. It's the largest tower and the one upon which the dragons are perched. Not connected to the main keep, but part of the inner bailey 
is one tower that you know very well, Veo. It is the Steward's Tower. And that was where you grew up. For that is where your father's of your father's old apartments and offices were. Guys, look at my house. <laughs> How does it look? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh here, I'll do this in the in, in our heads. Um I mean it's looking like it did fifteen years ago. But maybe older. But it's probably got my stuff in it. Do you want to Where do you guys want me to land? There are each of the gatehouses, so the the outer walls, the bastion walls, there's a drawbridge that leads up from, from them to get in, and then you go through the gatehouse of the, the, main, the first main gatehouse. And the way the first main gatehouse actually works is that you have to go through the gates, lead you through a tunnel which ramps up into the lower bailey. So you actually go underground to get into the main bailey itself first. And then from the lower bailey, there is another gatehouse, which itself has a drawbridge, and then is another tunnel into the upper bailey again. Um, it's a complete, in terms of sieges, it's a complete death trap because both of the tunnels are layered with murder holes um, and have their own drawbridges. And then the keep itself has its own outer fortifications and its own drawbridge as well. So there are three sets of drawbridges. <laughs> to get to the keep, there are three sets of drawbridges. Um, the other towers that are quite important but not attached to the main keep are the airy, which is where um, the king's flock of giant owls were kept. Um, and then the uh, the other buildings throughout uh, you re- remember as the knight's manor, the lady's manor, the servant's lodge, the armory, the stables. Um, and then there are other administrative buildings and warehouses throughout the, the, the castle. All, all said, Castle Draken uh, was built to be able to accommodate thousands of people and ha- had storehouses inside that could allow it to endure a siege lasting years. Well, this is going to be easy to scout. <laughs> um over Veo, we <clears throat> I I have to defer to your expert opinion. I've sieged only a handful of keeps in my day and none of them as complex as this and with your intricate knowledge of growing up here, like where do you think we should start? Tell me how smart I am again. We didn't see smartest you're... cat I know. <laughs> no, we just <laughs> you grew up here. And I, I did. <laughs> it's not smarts. That's just history. Hey, sh- oh, oh there are you other go back to entrances <laughs> into the castle than the main gates. There are others. There are. There is what is called the postern gate, um, and there are uh, there are servants' entrances into the main castle as well. Um, we probably don't want to take like the main road in. We probably want to take maybe some of the servants' entrances in to kind of scout out and see, you know where the side entrances might have been. Just point me, and I'll go. I'm also thinking... I point in a direction. (laughs) I dive towards that direction. We should also think about um, where we should establish our main operations when we do bring everyone, including George. Well, we need to make sure we find a path to the throne room, and if we can clear a path to the throne room, then we take that same path the next time we get here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But let's land outside in, in one of the maybe in our courtyards and we'll see from there as long as we can get out again. All right. There's specifically, there's the upper bailey and the lower bailey. The upper bailey being where the keep is located. Uh, would that be easier to fly out of? You can fly to wherever you want because you have, have flight, but right now I'm assuming that you're just looking fr- at this at the castle from a few feet, for, from several hundred feet away. I'm, I'm like circling around yeah. it. Yeah. As you circle around it, um, you notice that in the baileys, in the bailey courtyards, the ground is blackened and covered with ash. For in the air around the castle, there are flakes of... They float in the air like ash, but they are flakes of delirium. And there is a thick haze that hangs, almost like a bowl of soup, in the court har- cor- courtyards and the baileys themselves. And from that, as you look, 
you can see that the ground of the courtyards has become ashen and gray. And there are great rents in the earth where something very unlike what you've seen before has happened. In other places in the city where you've seen pieces of delirium, especially large shards, there have always been signs of craters. But through the courtyards of Castle Draken, from the air, you can see that parts of the earth have cracked open as if the shards of delirium jutted up from the ground. There are massive pieces of delirium in the courtyard and growing up the walls of the castle themselves. Um, through the latching onto the insides of the keep, parts of the outer walls, and jutting up out of the ground itself. These shards, similar in size to the ones that you saw around the Amethyst Academy, but again, it's like they've broken up under the flagstones of the courtyards and jutted up out of the ground themselves. The curiouser still is that there is what looks to be there there is pools of this purplish black liquid forming around around where the pieces of delirium have broken up from the ground and it's pooling out into these little rivers and deposits all throughout the, the courtyards and it and as you look it writhes slightly and in some places it's begun to streak up the castle walls like moss sten <laughs> sten's revenge <laughs> Guys, I hate to say this, but we're going to have to land in one of those courtyards. And not only that, but this is a uh, this is a mission where we're supposed to be gaining intel on what we might face in the castle so we know. So not only do we have to land in one of those courtyards, but we need to figure out if it's how dangerous those courtyards are. Do we have some uh, Aqua Expergo? That's what yes. I'm thinking, you yeah. Do. I think it's pop time one. we uh, pop the cork. Jam it into my eagle heart. <laughs> It's a drink now, isn't it? Oh, yeah, they made it into a drink. Isn't it a pill? A pill? It's a drink. It's, oh, a, drink. it's a drink. I, uh, uh, I it's pour in it my, down your gullet. It's in my bag. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll do it when you Which land. is also a problem. Well, I have one. I think I have one, don't I? Don't we all, all right. have one yeah. bunch? Yeah. yeah, you all at least have two doses. Oh, oh yeah, because to get into yeah. and... Yeah. So I'm going to give two. I'm going to well, drink one, and I'm going to feed one to Giant Eagle Sebastian. Eagle. Okay. Don't bite me. Um, when I <laughs> so th- one thing about this delirium that's jutting out from the ground, can I tell, based on my knowledge of the castle, um, what rooms would be underneath the sections where I see it mainly jutting out from? Um, I- in fact, there would be no rooms under there. Just the, the earth? Yeah, yeah. Be- because the... The underground components of the castle, um, that are, there are tunnels underneath the castle. Mm-hmm. There are dungeons in Dra- in Castle Draken, the dungeons of Drakenheim. <laughs> Roll credits. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, but in the courtyard, particularly the lower bailey, mm-hmm. there there's not a lot of stuff underneath there. It's solid rock because. It's built that way with the knowledge that if there were fortifications under there, in a siege, one of the best things to do would be to tunnel underneath mm-hmm. um, and then try to blow things up. So the one of the, the major defensive features of Castle Draken is that the whole outside fortifications, what's actually underground there is not that much. So the, this could have grown where they've grown up from. There's flagstones there, but mo- for the most part, it's solid earth where, where they came out of. Okay. But the delirium came from there, yeah. the earth. And how far away is this like from the meteor ex- crash? It's far. It's, it's far. Like this almost seems... Like this is, I'm trying to tie this together to the idea of an academy where we saw what only we could ex- describe as delirium growing before like what if this delirium has been underneath the city and it's only come to light because the meteor hit 
like we saw the like the the staff of power had delirium in it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, can we deny that? Like it was there. No, and or- we- Orcus had some when it's been we around for the longer statue. than the meteor. The meteor brought some to it. Yeah, delirium has been on this planet for a long time. It's it's a theory worth exploring. Or, you know, leaving. Maybe they can start by harvesting the castle stuff. Get it out of the yeah, way. Yeah, uh, yeah, that might be a job for the Amethyst Academy to clear out this castle courtyards and maybe <laughs> start, start reduce hacking it the down. haze in this area first. So what are some options that we have to land based on what we can see? So we have the the two Baileys. Yeah, if you want to... I mean, you could land on the roof of the keep. You could land on the top of the tallest tower if you want to try doing that. There's... Um, defenses <laughs> they're, they're, what could happen doing that and how you're going to get out is up to you right I've never um, fought as a you dragon. F- circle around you can see that the drawbridges have been lowered across and in, in fact there are you can see a group of minotaurs coming back towards the castle um, and they are bringing pieces uh, you can see that they are hauling a massive piece of delirium with them uh, intercept? I'm just going to say, step. the less minotaurs there are when we bring the group here, the better. Yeah. And these ones are separated from the core castle. There's only how many are there? Uh, there are eight of them. That's a lot. Maybe we should just, <laughs> maybe we should figure, let's, let's follow them as giant eagle yeah. and see where, how far they go in. Do they close and open these drawbridges? Do they have some sort of signal? Maybe we don't even see other people that are yeah, that's a good idea. Let's We're scouting, right? Let's Scout. take a s- moment to scout as a giant eagle. Sure. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> will as notice. Fly, <laughs> as the, the group of minotaurs <laughs> approach the castle, and one of them produces a horn, oh. which they blow, and there is a sounding of drums inside as the main gates of Castle Draken uh, thunder open. Again, as I said, the gates themselves, and the walls are built that the walls themselves are very high, but then the bailey inside is also raised up. So when the minotaurs go in through the gate, they go through this tunnel and then come up a ramp inside the courtyard itself. Um, and from what you can estimate, from the entrance to the exit of the ramp is about 50 feet. And it, it curves gently upwards. They come out, and then they proceed towards the... Um, the next gatehouse as well. Maybe one of the towers would be a good start to land. Yeah. Um, What's the tower that's closest to the main keep? The uh, Aside from other defensive towers, the closest tower um, closest be- tower is the steward's tower. And Veo, you know that there is an underground passage that links the steward's tower back to the main castle. Oh, we're so going why, home! Smart kitty. Why don't we go right to Veo's old home and then she can navigate us from there. Just don't touch my stuff. <laughs> okay, all right. Can we have any... Let's, let's try it again. <laughs> it's been 15 years. Don't touch my dad's stuff. It's nobody's stuff anymore. <laughs> Say that uh, again to my face. I mean, in my head. I, you're on my back. If you attack me right now, <laughs> it's, it's going to look bad for you, Vale. Let's go. I have magic that can I'm, help me. <laughs> okay. Let's land. Okay, let's go. Okay. I okay. Is aim there like, for the, and I kind of like aim it out with my hands. I'm like the top left. Is there windows on this thing? <laughs> yeah. So the the steward's tower is. Um, uh, a high tower on the attached on the upper bailey off the gate off the gatehouse and it is this tall building that the bottom of it the way that it's built on the inside on the inside part of the wall there's actually this manor house that abuts the bo- the base of the tower that is where uh, the steward's staff and personal servants used to live and where he had his own dining room and library like the steward's tower is a man is a little manor house unto itself. Mm. Uh, and the steward had his own staff and everything here, but then the tower itself rises up and then has this high set of battlements and then a smaller tower 
continues up then it has the copper roof on top so you could land on the rooftop and all the, the those rooms up at the top um that was where your bedroom was um you had a very high 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 bedroom up there up there yes. and there are um and there were balconies jutting out of them that you could you could land on the balconies to your room to your father's room or on the battlement tower themselves oh, the my room, my themselves. Room. all right let's go to my room veil points me to the balcony to her room and i fly down and i perch on the balcony okay you fly through the balcony um and there are a set of um doors and windows that are that are here on, on the balcony and you can see that there is this almost frosted mist across the windows looking inside um but there is a there's a doorway on the balcony that is locked and i believe veo you still have the key after all these years do I? <laughs> of course i do, do you want to keep uh, an eye i keep out? everything yeah, I'm I mean, gonna, either way, I could have like unlocked my way and used my thieves yeah. tools. As these two are uh, getting off my back, I'm I'm going to use my keen sight just to keep an observant eye on the surrounding area to make sure nothing mm. is uh, paying okay. too much attention to us. You I- can all roll a d6. One. 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 <laughs> you all rolled ones. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why did we do that? Or it's a seven. You all rolled one. It's ones. either a one yeah. or a seven. I can't tell. Okay. Well, there's only one thing that can happen now. <laughs> Rocks fall. We all die. As you land on the tower, there is a great mechanical roar <gasps> that howls through the air. This is my bedroom. <laughs> you must be and hungry. You look is that your up stomach? to the great stair tower as you see the great bronze gargoyle dragon on the top of it rear its head back and howl with a mechanical roar it echoes out across the city and can be heard for miles away it is thunderous and the tower shakes as the great bronze dragon of Castle Draken awakens. <laughs> From the tops of the stair towers, it digs its mechanical claws into the battlements as it unfurls its massive wings. Howling backward, it lurches from the top spire of Castle Draken towards the steward's tower. And as it does so, Several five smaller dragons leap off of the castle tower and join it in flight, in formation, as they sail towards you. What do you do? Do we run or try the badges? Um, uh, <laughs> run. I think, uh, uh, pork chops. I use <laughs> my <Pork> keen <laughs> sight. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What, what, Sebastian, you what see you my see? you see my me turn my head sideways and one eagle eye, the pupil goes big. <laughs> and then it goes small and then it goes big again and then I I go Ca-ca! and then I as, remember uh, there's dragons. As the <laughs> dragon comes towards you, you can see the pieces of delirium that have grown into it. Its <laughs> eyes alight with crackling bit bolts of purple energy we can take this. that cur- that form <laughs> a radiant corona of purple light around its wings and as it sails forward bolts of purple lightning pull down from the clouds oh. above we can take it hitting the lightning rods on the tops of the towers and actually um they Ricochet this bolt of lightning between all the dragons as they fly for, forward toward towards you. My uh, instincts, my survival instincts are yelling. Uh, no, nope. flight, nope. flight, flight. No, guys, no get thing. inside. Fly. No, what? We're leaving. Get inside. Get out you're, of here. You're an eagle still, right? I'm not flying. <laughs> get inside. They can't get us inside. Can't they? They can destroy my tower. I don't want to destroy my home. Um. Okay. What's the worst that could happen? Stop that. <laughs> this, stop. this is the worst that we, could happen. I I mean, are you are you an eagle still? Yeah. Um um Are you not flying? Are you, you guys are taking too long to decide. Roll I for know. initiative. Uh, 
Oh boy, guys! If we abandon the mission, what do what do we the get? The mission we is scouted. It. It's scouted. not killing a giant we dragon that and we there's awoke. A giant dragon. Why are you Why are you fighting us on this? <laughs> oh my god! Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, now I rolled poorly on initiative. I argued. And now you regret the decision. <laughs> well, I'm the one who has to fly us out of here. I mean, how? You can teleport. <laughs> yeah, you can teleport. Right? Yeah. So, in all encounters in Castle Draken, <coughs> Castle Draken gets a turn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Guys, we can take it. We're level uh, 11 now. I've been itching to use some spells. Can you make us look like dragons? <laughs> can you just. I feel yes. Like we can literally you start we're, with that? we're on you as an eagle. We're like, go, go. And you're like, rah. According to ancient tales, this dragon was carved in the likeness of Minazorond, the great bronze dragon, and his brood. Okay. What you got, Veo? 25. 25. Sebastian? 8. 8. Pluto? 14. 14, okay. <coughs> so the wormlings go last. Sebastian, Ludo, Castle Draken, Minazaron, and Veo is our order. <coughs> so Veo, you are the first to act. Minazaron is appro- approximately three hundred and eighty feet away from you. Oh, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Unlock the door, I yell. Um, we'll see if she listens. If anybody will listen to I me. I mean, are you listening to us? No. Well, there you go. <laughs> and uh, I'm the smart the, the, one. The doors themselves, what kind of doors are they? Uh, the, this is the door to your uh, bedroom. They're made of oak, filigreed with gold, and bound in iron, and decorated however you like. Dragons can't go through oak, right? <laughs> and that's, uh, that is... Protect us, the great oak. Oh, oh my <laughs> god. You said it's got delirium coming out of it, yeah? Yep. I cast... It's 380 feet away. Yeah, you can get that. Veo's, like, you're fine. lining up the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because... <laughs> Sharpshooter. Yeah. Yep. All right. <laughs> I line up the shot and I take one of my magical arrows. Um, and I shoot at the delirium on it. Okay. okay. We'll see. 60 feet. 15? You're the arrow, uh, w- what are you shooting with? Longbow. Your longbow? Okay, so yeah, you're well within range. Um, the arrow sails towards it, and as it does so, it does a barrel roll and deflects the arrow off of its wings. <clears throat> uh, I can't even see <laughs> what's my happening. Bonus action. Have you fired your second shot? No. Okay. Um. To Zephyr Strike. Okay. I'm gonna fire my second shot with the advantage. Uh, 23. That is a hit. Wow! On the delirium on the dragon using a magical arrow. You can hit the delirium, but it damages it as normal because it's yeah. part of the creature. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, nice. Here, one second. I get three dice. Three. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thirty-five damage. Alrighty. Thirty-five damage. Bits of metal and gears fly out as as the arrow crashes into the dragon's breast, 
uh, and it continues soaring towards the air towards you. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Um, I believe I get my additional weapon attack. Yep, you get one more. Ambusher. Yep. yep. Uh, eighteen. Nope, nineteen. Uh, it deflects off the faceplate of the dragon. Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. Okay, and from here, we're on a balcony. Do mm-hmm. I see any other balconies? Uh, you would need to climb. You landed on your balcony for yeah. your room, okay. which is there's a balcony on the other side of the tower, huh. one level lower, which is your father's balcony. I don't think I'm going to make it there. Get inside. And, but you could also leap down approximately 40 feet to the battlements below. To the battlements of the... Because, the, again, your bedroom towers are jumping up by two steps, <clears throat> right? So yep. there's a battlement where the tower widens. I run towards my door, and I ready my key. Okay. I'm like, inside? <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, you can use your interaction to open the door if oh, you want to open yes, it. Yes, I want to do that. Yes. Okay. And run inside. Sure. What does your bedroom look like? Um, It's, it's very... It's just like you remember it. Yeah. It's it's covered in a thick layer of dust. Definitely. I'm like... Achoo. Um, It's it's very like neutral colored, but has pieces of like drawings around and like lots of toys. Because you're, definitely... you're like 10, right? Yeah. When, yeah, when you're last year. So the first thing that you notice when you open the door is that there's a cloud of smoke. <coughs> oh, it's Fill, uh, filling the doorway. Is it like delirium smoke? It reminds you of the smoke that covered the windows of the Amethyst Academy. Oh, weird. Interesting. I keep. Is there any? There's a door going, mm. I guess, into the inner. You remember that it wasn't this black before, but Castle Draken is warded in the same way that. The academy's warded against teleportation and scrying. Oh. But because we walked in and we had a key. Yeah. Are you doing okay? Yeah. All right. Um, I try to get as far in yeah. as possible. Yeah. As possible. So your old room occupies most of the tower. There's a large hearth and your old bed and your old wardrobes and everything. And then there's a doorway leading out to the spiral staircase, which goes back down, which leads down to a hallway where your father's room is. And mm. it leads one more up to the attic level of the tower um i'm going to um just use my feline agility to get as far as i can okay uh you what's your total speed this this level of the tower is only about uh 20 feet in diameter so you could very easily go quite far down if you wanted to technically i can get uh 110, I think? Yeah, you could almost run back down to the main part of the tower if you wanted to. I get down to the main part of the tower. I okay. Say, Guys, follow me! So you crash down the stairs uh, and vanish out of sight. Um, the dragon, at the end of your turn, uses its legendary actions to move forward 40 feet. <gasps> um, and then... It takes its turn and it dashes and flies uh, a total of... So it is now covered a total of 200 feet forward. It is now 180 feet away from the tower itself. Um, Now, Castle Draken takes its turn and you two are still outside? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, a bolt of lightning comes down from the clouds above. Both of you can make a dexterity saving throw. What? Hello. Mm-hmm. 15. 22. You both succeed, but you still take half damage. So that you each take 10 points of electrical damage. That was unexpected. I'm going to use my shield to... Ah! <laughs> okay. Ah! Pluto, it is your turn. Um... I run inside because me no likey fight dragon <laughs> on tower. Okay. And uh, I dash as fast as I can down the stairs. Okay. I mostly fall down them. 
<laughs> Sounds good. You dash across of Ao's room, uh, possibly s- trampling h- some of her old toys. <laughs> You don't know this. You're like a thousand miles away. I can hear she with can my hear keen hearing. I st- and you, I let out like a Caspian like swear yeah. word because I'm stepping on like Lego yeah. and junk. <laughs> so those are antiques. Be careful. And uh, I just start booking it, like basically tumbling down the stairs, okay. like taking them four at a time. Okay. <laughs> it's a dragon, it's a dragon, it's a dragon, dragon, dragon. <laughs> Sebastian, it is your turn. I start backing up and I... I so oh, actually. Oh, sorry. At the end of Pluto's turn, the dragon spends his next legendary action to move another forty feet. It's how a, how close is it? It's one hundred and forty feet away. Good. Um, <clears throat> I start. I actually. So I unbird. So I in, a, in an explosion of uh, feathers, I turn back into Sebastian on the balcony, and I twirl the staff of power in my hand, and I look at the dragon, and I'm like. I'm here to do a job, dragon, and you're not stopping me. And as I'm backing towards the door, I whisper to my staff of power and I go, please don't turn me into a potted plant. (laughs) And as I back through the door, I'm going to cast Wall of Force across the balcony, like encapsulating it. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Alrighty. Um, Once again, um, because of the... um, total and complete influence of Castle Draken's Delirium. I'm going to have you roll twice on the wild magic table and we will choose the result. And then I will choose the result. <laughs> always oh, always good for a laugh. 98. 98. Oh, wait. Okay. I don't remember what that was. 92. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Good. They're both really, really weird. Yay! Um, one's if you die within the next minute, you immediately come back to life as, as if reincarnated. That one. And the other is you're surrounded by faint ethereal music for the next minute. Which one would you like? <laughs> I'm just going to roll a d6. Because uh, I... Well, I mean, it's possible that you could die in the next minute, so that might be advantageous. <laughs> Knowing the way Sebastian's feeling right now, it's possible. If you die in the next minute, you will be reincarnated. Yay! All right, so I feel <laughs> so I feel power, like- powerful, and as I as I cast the spell, part of like you can see like purple energy flowing yeah. through me as this like purple barrier goes around the outside, and I back through the door, holding the staff of power out, concentrating on this wall of energy to stop the dragons from entering <laughs> tripping and there's a clattering as you as you trip over some of the plates that veo left and i go ah, and then i stand back up and still try to look <laughs> and you hear me stop stepping on my stuff and i move 30 feet okay back so you're the on the stairwell <clears throat> okay the wormling dragons all fly forward um and they try to keep pace with uh the uh, with big daddy dragon there um, and uh, with that, we go back to the top of the round with Veo. You have come down the stairs um, quite a bit. You're now in the main level. Like, the, there's one spiral staircase that goes all the way up and down. Mm-hmm. The steward's tower it would lead all the way out or all the way down. And so the top two levels that you were on were your father's room. Uh, and then there was kind of um, your father's study and then there's another level that's on the same level as the battlements uh, that was more of a sitting room and then with how far down you've come you're underneath the battlement part of the tower um, almost on the same level where you could get out onto the castle walls if you wanted to from here and here on on this level um, are some of your father's personal offices so tempting um but again, the, the each the, because of the way the spiral staircase goes, it's like a hallway of staircases. So there, you then have to open the door to get into the room on that on that level as it as it spins down through the tower. Okay. Um, I just telepathically quickly say, guys, what's the plan here? I don't know. There's a dragon coming at us, and I'm just running down the stairs. I'm protecting us from the dragon. We're here to investigate the castle. Well, let's investigate the castle by being chased by a dragon. The dragon's you- outside. Um, Is it going to stay out there? Yes. I... Thank you. <laughs> I slow my pace down the stairs. I go from, like, the tumble, and then I start, like, 
to a casual jog, and then like now I'm holding the handrail and just kind of like taking it in. <laughs> just calmly walking down. And you see me kind of entering the stairwell holding my staff. I'm, I'm on it. We're I okay. I continue making my way d- essentially down as far as I can. I want to make it to like a bottom level. Even I consider mm. like the walls of the it, the dragon can come cool. get us there. So I just want to keep inside. And keep as you down. pass down the stairs, you pass by the door to your father's office and you hear a faint word sound of a familiar voice and it echoes down the halls and says, Vale? And I recognize this voice. Mm-hmm. And I stop immediately. And I turn around to where the voice came. Make a perception check. 18. The echo came up and down the halls. But you think it might have come from behind the door. But it doesn't didn't sound like it came from someone speaking behind the behind a door. I rush up to the door and I open it. It's locked. And I don't have the key? No, you would not have had the key for this. I use the thieves' tools to okay. try to unlock it. Uh, this plus proficiency? Yep, and your dexterity? 18? 18. The lock opens... And inside is your father's office. It's a well-appointed bureau with lined with several bookshelves and those type of um, cabinets that are like, that are wooden and almost filing cap. They're basically wooden filing cabinets where he kept all, all the documents and all the important administration for running the castle. Your father as the steward was, he was in charge of payroll. He was in charge of counting. You know, he was in charge of grocery shopping. He's such a smart guy. Um, and his, his desk is there, papers scattered all about through through the room. And you can see on the desk, there is a pen on the desk floating on one of the pages, writing on one of the pages back and forth, back and forth. And then one of the pages flies out into the air and then it, the pen starts writing on another page and it flies out into the air and the pen starts writing on another page and the pages fly out into the air until there's the swirling of pages all through the air guys 17 rounds later we catch up with you. <laughs> <laughs> I step cautiously into the room step into the room and the pages begin swirling around you almost like they're they almost form into a row and swirl around you and this is you this is you man <laughs> we just close the door and, and the, the pen <laughs> continues to write furiously another uh, uh, um and then one of the drawers opens up and a bunch of pages fly out of the drawers and several of the the drawers on the desk open up and pens jump out of them and begin writing on on the pages and scrawling all across them. And I reach out and I grab a page. What does it say? Run. And another says, get out, go, never come back. Do you recognize Another page right? flies into your face. You pull it away. It says, there is nothing but death for you here, Veo. Leave. And it says Veo? I'm just stuck. I'm standing. That's what I do is I just look at the papers. I, I put on my goggles and I use one of the charges to, to look into the room. You see the outline of, an, of, of a man. He has a, crook, uh, a cro- crooked, almost aquiline nose and these big wide whiskers and this slightly bal- balding head. And he's grabbing the pens and he's writing on, on, on them. And as he locks eyes with you, and he says, and you hear him in his mind says, get out of here, you fool, and vanishes. I, I explain what I just saw. Veo, and I, the pages fall to the ground and the pens drop to the ground. I, I describe the man to Veo. Was that? What was, is this place, Veo? Was that your dad? It's my dad. Guys, he's here. He needs my help. I can't. 
I can't leave him here. I'm finally finding where he was. He was here when the meteor fell. We need to find him. Based on what I saw, did I see a ghost or did I just see a magical, like, was I able to... Make an arcana check. 18. It was an unseen servant. Veil, what I just saw was a magical representation of your father. I don't know what that means. I don't know. He's trying to warn us, but it's because he's trying to self-sacrifice for some stupid reason like that. But I'm here to help him. I need to help him. I mean, we're not going to leave just because some apparition tells us to. There's a slam as the tower shakes and you hear the roar of the dragon crashing against the walls and the, the, your wall of force is still in effect and you can hear it, the, the rattling and shaking against the, the building of the, of the like dragon. dust moving yeah. and like the, the... Guys, we got about 10 minutes to get as far away from that thing as possible. And I just yell up, Stop ruining my home! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you thought me stepping on some of your old toys was bad. Veo, you've led us this far. What do you want to do? And there's underground passages from here, correct? There is a secret passage from the steward's tower to under beneath the keep. Yes. I know where we need to go to continue this mission. Um, Do you need a moment? No, we need to go now. Okay. Okay. And I start to rush off towards him, like, follow me. Hmm. You descend deep into down the staircase to the cellars of the steward's tower. There you see the collected bottles of wine where of your father's old collection. And as you come down the stairs, there's a pop as the corks pop out of the bottles of one, of one of the bottles of wine and it pours out onto the floor um, and forms into a word and it says, no, no, please don't. You have to go. You have to go. There's nothing for you here. I'm gone. No. No. I'm not leaving without him. Goggles still on. Do I see the same form in here? Um, you again an Arcana check. Mm, no, that's a seven. There's not. You don't see an unseen servant, but there is some magic force that is pulling the wine in this shape. What do you? What does your senses tell you, Sebastian? Here, I, I need. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, all right. It, it's it, all, right, it, all right. It's the. I mean, the Nothing wine rocks. would now be at least fifteen years old. <laughs> Do good. Older. Well, it depends. Well, it was in the Did bottle. Did air get to it? Yeah. No. No. It was, no. It was, it's all been kept well. It's probably. So it's actually probably a pretty good vintage. Spoil, it's probably right? worth more to sell than it is to drink. Just. <laughs> Okay. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's not magical wine. The magic is causing the wine to come out, but the wine isn't. It's not magical. You're not a very good sommelier. I, I get, you're, you're drinking <clears throat> way too much. I get hints of um, <clears throat> Drakenheim. You just have to say that there's complicated, no, complex no, no. flavors. It's Draken wine. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Add this to our soda yums. So we'll have a solid. You know, drink business going. Um, <laughs> Sebastian, and I smack the bottle with your hand, and I say, this is no time for drinking, regardless of how good it okay, is. Okay, there's wine exploding everywhere. What do you want me to do? Let it all go to waste? Yes. Oh. Uh, and I, I yell out, and I say, stop trying to protect me. I've been through enough situations. I can handle this. Where are you? And I wait. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> I'm yeah. drinking the wine. <laughs> Fifteen. This is intense. One of the big casks of wine 
the tap pops open. But no wine comes out. I go up to it and I try to take the front off Check of it. Out. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a massive cask. I'll help. A big barrel, enough, like, enough, enough, like, one of those giant barrels. You pull the front off of it open, and there's a passage. <laughs> I knew it. That's incredible. Guys, come this way. And I start to go to the passage. I'll be back for this later. <laughs> Just grab a bottle. Okay. <laughs> and I'm, like, rushing, like... To the point where I'm not even watching the guys behind me. I'm assuming they're keeping up, but I am I am We're getting not, towards uh, my goal. You run down the tunnel Bam. of the wine cellar. <laughs> we have to tell into the, the darkness towards the keep of Castle Draken. And that is where we're going for tonight. <gasps> I imagine that Veo's running so far ahead of us that like we actually just lose sight of her as she disappears into the yeah. darkness. It's like to the Gone. point where I can like use my feeling on agility and then I wait and then I use my feeling on agility and then I wait. <laughs> I can get so far ahead. You run and then you stop for a second and just take in your surroundings and then run again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! There's a dragon outside. Yeah, yeah guys, you. I took care of it. I took care of it. I mean... For 10 minutes, <laughs> it will not get into the castle. What's it going to do? Climb down the stair? No, nah, it's too big. No. <laughs> Don't worry. Stop. Don't worry. Just stop. What's the worst that could happen? Stop. <laughs> where's, where's my script? Well, uh, we as always, a big thank you to our cast, Jill, Kelly, and Joe, uh, for playing... Dungeons of Dragon on tonight. And a huge thank you to Kyle for working diligently behind the scenes Woo! and making all of the magic happen. There it is. There's that um, hand. And always uh, a big shout out for Tabletop Audio um, for providing all their ambient music. We've been using them since session one. So uh, check it out on your own games, uh, whether they be uh, live or digital, tabletopaudio.com. It's all free and it's all there for you. And of course, don't forget to take a look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can get some of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirt designs or you can check out the link bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. If you are enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, please consider checking us out on Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community, which is so much fun to just go in there and chat with everybody. It's exclusive to our patrons. So if you do join the uh, Patreon, make sure to join us in Discord, hang out with all of us, talk about Drakenheim, behind the scenes stuff what our characters are up to, or just anything D&D related. We have great places there to talk about character creation, rules explanations, or just uh, your favorite video games or cat photos, because mm. that happens a lot. A lot, a lot of cat photos. photos. Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for Dungeon Masters and guides for players. You'll also find prior episodes from this campaign available for your viewing pleasure there as well. What do we have coming on Thursday, Kelly? Uh, we are taking a look at getting started homebrewing. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, we're talking. Uh, I think that's where we, we talked about like all the different things to keep in mind if you want to homebrew like your own races or f classes or feats or spells and stuff, right? Absolutely. It's going to be super cool. So check that out on YouTube this week. And be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. And of course, we will be heading uh, to PAX Unplugged in the first weekend yeah! of December. Uh, all of us are going to be there uh, on the 6th, 7th, and 8th of December in Philadelphia. So if you are coming to PAX Unplugged, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Dungeon underscore Dudes because we'll be posting updates of what we're doing, what we're go what we're checking out, where we're going to be. And we might try to arrange some sort of like, hey, we'll be here at this time if you want to say hello. Uh, we would love to... Uh, roll some dice, play some games, or even just say hi. If you, if you are going to PAX Unplugged, it sounds like a really good time. It's our first time going. Yeah. Yes. Hooray. Yeah. So I've always wanted to go to, to PAX. To any PAX of any kind. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm super stoked. Yep. Uh, so with that, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim. Mm -hmm.